So hi and welcome Estelle. Thank you so much for having me. So I like to kick off with a little bit of getting to know you and your business. So how did you come to start MIBA, this Mums in Business Association? Okay, so it goes back um, kind of further than, you know, where we started with MIBA. I had no business experience at all when we started the Mums in Business Association. So my journey in creating MIBA was kind of a little bit before that. So I had found myself um, a newly single parent, my two boys. And really, um, at probably the lowest place that I'd ever felt in my life, I had no support system, I had no financial support, um, I had no emotional support with the boys. Um, and at one point, it was so bad that I had to go to food banks. I literally, when I, when I walked away from my 10-year relationship, I had nothing, I was left with nothing. And it was then that I realised that I needed to take control, that I would be the only person that could you know, provide for us now. And that kind of kicked in a realization in me that, you know, I was fully responsible for this. And what was I going to do to make sure that we didn't stay in this situation? And having um, my two boys and being a single parent, it was really hard trying to find something that fit for me flexibly to be able to be there with the boys um, that was going to benefit for us financially. So it was a really, really tough time for me. And that was when um, I decided that the, probably the only way for me to be able to be at home with the boys was to start my own business. And I'd been doing a photography course as an adult in night school. And I had been there for probably three years and done my teaching qualification. And so I'd gained um, quite a lot of knowledge, but it had never been something that I'd wanted to focus on as a career. It was something that I had done um, as a, a form of therapy to get me through um, having postnatal depression. So it was a skill that I'd had, but never really used. Mm -hmm. And so um, that that point came when I thought, you know, what skills do I have to set up a business? And um, thankfully for me then, I, I had the skills of my photography and everything that I'd learned. And so I set up my wedding photography business, which was um, amazing. It was something that I was so passionate about. But what I didn't realize as somebody starting a business is that you need to have more than passion and the skill. You know, there's lots of other things that come along with creating a successful business. So I was, you know, quite skilled when it came to the wedding photography side of things, but I had no idea about accounts and marketing and, you know, creating websites. And there didn't seem to be anywhere that I could go to find all of these things in one place and to find people who were going through the same sort of things that I was, I felt so isolated. And the only person that I was really verbalizing this to at the time was my sister, Leona, who was living in Wales. So I was based in Leicestershire and she was in Wales. So we had a lot of telephone conversations. She was in network marketing at the time. So working from home herself, um, she had five children. And so she was understanding the struggles of being somebody that was working from home um, for themselves as well. And so this was where the idea came from to create the Mums in Business Association, because we wanted to create a safe place that people could come to, share their struggles, you know, share their successes and share their skill sets. So we could create one place where women could go to and no matter what it was within business and life, they would be able to find somebody within the community um, that could help them. And we started that in June 2017, and we're about to approach our third year, and we've hit 55,000 members within our Facebook community, which is absolutely mind-blowing. And that's where the Mums in Business Association really started from, I guess. Um, we have lots of things that we do now um, alongside the Facebook group. So we have um, our networking events and our publishing, um, so it's, it's enabled us to really support and empower lots of lots of other women as well. So, you know, the, the creation of, of MIBA came from my lack of business knowledge um, in my previous business. Yeah. And I think a lot of businesses start that way, don't they? That there's a need that you have that you've identified and then you quickly see that actually there's a lot of people around you with that same issue. And I'm, I'm sure pretty much all of the listeners at home are, are nodding along like, yeah, I don't know where to go. Or, you know, there are so many things to figure out when you're starting a business. 
it's can it's it can be overwhelming at times but once you get that roadmap and you that sense of community and i think that's the part that's so important for women is to have that community around them because we do need these role models and people who are just going to be there it just say yeah it's it's hard isn't it or or to give you that that next tip that will help you take that next step so i think it's an incredible business and the, the rapid growth you've had has really been testament to to how much of a need but how much of a solid business you've you've built and i think a lot of the time we think oh we don't have these business skills or the ability but actually once you push yourself in there you can figure these things out pretty quickly with a little bit of knowledge and and you kind of it all comes together so often i ask the question of how was the expectation of running a business versus what you thought it would be but i would kind of have the impression that you didn't really have any idea of what kind of form this was going to take when you started it yeah i guess there's there's two different ways that i can look at it so from um from the mums in business association point of view we never expected it to be what it is now so the expectation that there wasn't any expectation um but i knew when starting um, my wedding photography business that i had an expectation that I, it would fit within my life really well um, that it would make us more financially stable um, but the the things that i didn't know like i mentioned were, were all the things that i would need to learn as well you know just having that skill set is not enough just having that that one thing is not enough to grow a business it, it will keep you happy um, when days are very sad if it's something you are very passionate about but it's not necessarily going to pay the bills and that is where um, you you know your community really comes into play it, it you know that that sense of you're not going through this alone that lots of other people are going through this you know there's so many people out there the one thing um, that I would say like you said is don't let that fear hold you back um, I had if I'd have thought um, two years ago I would be learning the things I'm learning now I would have run as fast as I could in the opposite direction um, the, the conversations we have to have with accountants and lawyers and you know all of these different things about policies um, I never dreamt I would ever need to know anything about that let alone want to learn about it um, but it is when you're put in those situations when you feel that you can't go any further that you really actually grow the most yeah and I think a lot a lot of the time ignorance is bliss in business when you don't know what's coming and you just go straight on into it you're like oh right and you have to figure it out <laughs> you that know? is definitely the story of Mibar. we we run at things um like 150 miles an hour and we figure it out along the way and that's how we have always done everything because we didn't have any experience or knowledge in anything really to do with business we are learning along the way our first book that we brought out we decided we were going to write a book and i remember having the conversation with Leonie and saying you know we've never wrote a book i'm going to have to google it and that was literally what I did. And the first book we ever wrote went from idea to being an Amazon number one bestseller within five weeks from idea to being on Amazon, you know, and that was because we didn't care if we got it right or we got it wrong. We were going to do it either way and use it as an opportunity for us to learn if it, well, either way, whether it works or it doesn't work, you know, you've always got that opportunity to learn and grow. Yeah, I think that's a great attitude because I see a lot of women holding themselves back through lack of confidence, through this fear of what if it doesn't work and and that doesn't really exist in reality. It, it, if it doesn't work, you learn through that and you come out with something better or you're stronger or you've learned, okay, I hate working with those type, type of clients or whatever it is. It all helps push you to that next stage in business. Is there any advice you would give around that about how to kind of feel the fear and do it anyway and just like smash through those challenges um surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you and lift you up because there are going to be times in business when you know things are going to come crashing down things are not going to go as well as you think they might go um, and surrounding yourself with people who actually understand so that's um, a huge thing because and sometimes even the people that you're closest to within your you know immediate family don't understand what it's like because they're not going through it as a business owner 
they're going through this as your partner or your your friend or your sister um so being around people who can say to you you know this is this is okay this happens to all of us um but you need to dust yourself off that is the crucial thing and you know never lose sight of why you're doing what you're doing in the first place even if something goes wrong you know you had that reason why you started to do that thing in the first place so you need to go back and remind yourself of what that thing is yeah that's brilliant advice and i think so often we think we're the only ones feeling this way or the only ones to not succeed in this and when you speak to others you realize that no we're all figuring it out we all make the same mistakes we all have the same challenges and and there's a there's a great strength in that recognition i think and and yeah going back to your preface why why did you start this why do you care about this why and and really building up that motivation to help you power through i think that's two really important points thank you and you mentioned your books there and you have so five books you've got written now is that right we we actually have a huge amount of books out there on amazon so i think we're up to like 16 or 17 Whoa. amazon bestsellers so um a lot of our books are published on kindle as well so um we have a whole range of books we have the mumpreneur on fire series um, which there are one, two, three, and four, and we're about to launch the Australian edition of that in June. And then we have our Mums in Business Association planners. We have our guide to growing your Instagram. And we also have the Mibba Laid Bear autobiography, which kind of tells you the story behind why we started Mibba and the first year of the creation. So we've, um, we've, we've had a hand in creating lots of books over the last couple of years you really keep yourselves busy <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we'll include a link to your uh, laid bare book underneath so people can go and check that out but you you touched on instagram there and you're known as being a queen of instagram and i'd love to get some tips that that's one platform that i really haven't been able to personally get my, my teeth into but what made you choose instagram over all the others and how have you, how have you made that work for you it wasn't really a conscious choice for me so when i was a wedding photographer i was using it um, as more of a portfolio for me to um, show people all of my best images and it was a, an incredible platform for that because you know you go to a website you've got lots of different pages to scroll through whereas instagram was very visual so that really really appealed to me it was a great place for me to be able to showcase my work mm -hmm. so that's where my love of instagram actually started but at that time I didn't really use it for business. I didn't know how to use it to grow my visibility. I didn't know how to attract um, followers or the ideal clients that I wanted to connect with. So at that point, um, it was just because I enjoyed using it to showcase my images. But when I realized that I was starting to um, gain followers and you know have conversations with people that were leading to them booking me for weddings, that's when I actually realized that you could use this for business as well. So we're talking, this wasn't until probably, um, I don't know, 2016, 17, when I really started realizing what you could use Instagram for. And it was when we started Mibba that I would share all my favorite tips. Um, you know, like you were saying, we're very um, engaged with our community there. We go live every week. We're always there, you know, posting and commenting. So anytime I found something that was working for me, I would share it into the group and say, you know, check this out. This is a really simple way to do this. Um, and that was how um, I became known as the Insta Queen because I was just consistently sharing what I was learning because I, I knew that Instagram was a brilliant platform even then and people were just scared of using it. And because like anything new, if you don't understand, you find it quite um, daunting to try something new. So what my goal was, was to demystify Instagram for as many people as I could so that they could use it to grow their business um, and not be so afraid anymore. And that seems to have worked. Um, our Instagram following has grown massively over the last couple of years. And, um, and it's been consistent. You know, this is the one thing that I do really stress to um, everybody that's listening. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. We've just hit 17K followers on the, the Mibber account. And I set my account up um, about 10 months ago and I've just hit 5K there. So, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. This has taken two years or, you know, almost a year in my case. So it doesn't happen overnight. 
But what I'm learning now is that the easier I can make things, the more people are willing to try. And so that's why all of our training videos are really short. You know, they're very simple to the point because people don't want to sit and watch, um, you know, an hour long webinar where they've got to sit and, you know, really focus. A lot of our clients are mums and, and really busy women in business that, you know, have 10 minutes to grab here and there. So the fact that I keep my tips and, you know, all the things that I share really short seems to really work as well. Yeah, I love that bite sized value yeah. that you can just grab and go and it really helps. And then if you have more time, you can just watch a few. I think it's, it's, it's a big lesson I'm learning is to break things down because in my corporate career and as a consultant, I was used to running workshops for half a day up to three or four days and then breaking that down and condensing it into five, 10 minutes has been a real learning curve, but it's so powerful and you, it, it, is. You, it really pushes you as well to focus on well, what's the real thing here that people need to know and just get that across rather than that, having all the fluff around it. That's something that I've had to learn a lot about as well, because um, I could talk about Instagram all day long. You know, like you say, I could host a, a two day long training webinar workshop um, and literally talk for the whole two days and still have things to say about Instagram. And so I try and tailor everything that I talk about. I usually have um, trainings of half an hour into um, big like network marketing groups or big corporations. And I tend to try and keep them to half an hour and then really focus on what it is that people need. So if they're in network marketing, you know, they want to stand out. What can make them stand out? within their audience you know people that have got big corporations they want to know how can they attract new clients so it totally depends on the audience as to what i focus on when it comes to instagram and that's something that like you say i've had to learn as well and breaking it down with any business is the best way for you to go forward whether it's instagram social media you know accounting by breaking things down it, it makes things so much easier to digest and seems so much less overwhelming yeah, exactly. We can only ever take that next one step at a time. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves that we, that, that's all it takes is one step and then breaking it down and just keep going. Yeah, definitely. So one thing that you and Le Leona have really excelled at is creating this wonderful community. And I think the community kind of feeds into itself after a certain while. Is there any tips you can share with others who want to start perhaps a, a group of some kind and to build a sense of community into that? Listen to what your followers want um, and your audience want. That is probably um, the, the one biggest thing that I would tell anybody when it comes to creating a group or a community. Um, we still do this to this day. Um, most um, every other day or so, we will post a poll into the group to find out um, what sort of guest speakers you want or what sort of training that people want in the VIP area or, you know, what do they want to see from me and Leona next? Do they want a retreat? Would they like to come away with us for two days? Or would they like something, you know, that's online based where they can dip in and out of, you know, it's always about listening to what our community want when it comes to our books, you know, do they want um, a book that they can sit and read or do people want something that they like a workbook that they can learn along with rather, you know, we just listen to what our audience want consistently. And that's what's, you know, kept us going really, because we're, we're consistently giving our community what it is that they need. Um, and it's really easy to find out what they need by simply asking. Yeah, brilliant. I love that. Just listen to your audience, respond, engage and, and grow and build with them. Yeah. Uh, Estelle, you have shared so many amazing tips already. As we come to, to wrap up the interview, I wonder if I could ask you if there's like one overall piece of advice you'd like to give to the other women out there who are perhaps in the early stages or just starting to scale and feeling that 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 kind of those fears coming back for a moment is there anything you you can share with them to help them get to that next stage okay so going back to surrounding yourself with with the right sort of people um shameless plug go on over to the Mums in Business Association, you know, that is that is the most incredible community that you could possibly find. People are going through the same experiences. They're full of knowledge and support. Um, so it doesn't have to be, you know, somebody in person. It's about surrounding yourself um, with people who are going to support you and lift you up because times are going to get hard. So that's probably another little 
you know, point to make there. Times are going to get hard. They get hard, um, you know, on this journey that we're on, but you can overcome them. Um, and having the right sort of people around you is, um, is crucial. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think having that, I call it a success circle, like people around you who you can turn to and who you are going to support as well. And it is so, so important for, for everyone and, and women, especially that sense of community is really powerful. So, um, and thank you again for creating such an incredible association. I know I'm in there and I always get great inspiration from people and I love reading everyone's stories and like, wow, I never thought of that. Or, uh, wow, I, it's so inspiring to see someone else has gone through something similar or something different and often those different things are your next challenge it's just waiting around the corner so you have that inspiration already feeling that yeah I can do this <laughs> yeah definitely and we have our networking events which are all online now so if people are wanting to go connect and grow their business in a more localized way um, then they can check out the Mums in Business Association events we have 250 um, events happening around the world these were offline of course before um, we had the lockdown so we had um, child-friendly networking events happening in Barbados and Spain you know literally across the globe and these are all now available um, to attend online so for anybody that wants to go and connect um, with people in their area they can do so um, at our events as well which is a great way for people to be staying connected. Wonderful and so needed right now. Great. Well, thank you so much, Estelle. I'll put all the links uh, to your uh, various uh, accounts below so people can connect with you and learn more. And of course, grab a copy of your book. I'm sure they're going to take away so much value from that too. Thank you so much for having me on. And thank you for all your listeners to listen for listening. <laughs> Bye.